The metaverse race between Microsoft and Zuckerberg's meta is on, and it seems like Microsoft is going to give Zuckerberg a run for his money. And the best part about it is that Microsoft might not even have to build a virtual reality headset to do it. This may sound a little surprising because from everyone's point of view Zuckerberg has clearly thrown his hat in the ring to show that he and his company is all about the metaverse. It was so evident that Zuckerberg was invested in the metaverse that he renamed his company Meta just to show the world where his efforts lie. So far, Meta's CEO plans to invest $180 billion over the next 10 years in building his own space in the metaverse. However, his plans doesn't seem great for a number of reasons. But before we look into these reasons, Zuckerberg looks like he has a solid plan. Thanks to his social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, and the fact that he also owns the biggest virtual reality company Oculus, it seems at first glance that Meta's CEO is well positioned to take over the metaverse. But as we said earlier, his plans might have a few holes. Although currently, many people still see virtual reality as a toy. But in 2021, the Quest outsold the Xbox, and though Zuckerberg might have many features to offer, Microsoft is not ready to allow him to win. There are three key reasons why Microsoft will beat Zuckerberg in this race for the metaverse. The first strategy that Microsoft intends to use to beat Meta is the gaming industry. Gaming is a great entry point into the metaverse and we already have games such as Second Life, World of Warcraft, and Fortnite that are giving us a taste of what the metaverse is going to look like. But it is going to be a lot more crazier. The big dream for the metaverse is that experiences are going to become bigger and more immersive with the ability to interact with millions of people that share the virtual world. Using the gaming industry, digital assets and avatars will be able to move between different spaces and full economies will also develop to support a wide range of contributors. It is not exactly clear what platform will be most dominant, but what is clear is that the gaming industry is going to play a high role and Microsoft is using this as its ingenious strategy. Unlike Facebook, which has only given us the game farm bill, which is not even considered a classic. Microsoft, on the other hand, has been expanding the gaming world for years. Since the 90s, Microsoft has been a massive player in the video game industry, with games like Doom, and later with Xbox games like Gears of War. But to do much more in the gaming industry, you have to own a studio that creates it. As such, in 2014, Microsoft bought Minecraft for $2.5 billion, and ever since, the game has grown to have over 140 million monthly active users. It is also evolving into its own metaverse where players can build entire simulations like with the Mr. Beast competition that has over 2,000 contestants. As part of Microsoft's effort to expand their territory in the gaming industry, they bought ZeniMax Media for $7.5 billion, and this has given them rights to Fallout, Doom, and The Elder Scrolls. And all these games boast communities that are changing and growing the metaverse experience. Recently, Microsoft also acquired Activision Blizzard for $69 billion, and this is a huge amount of money. But if any company has $130 billion in cash, it's Microsoft, and this money is going to play a huge role in their metaverse strategy. Microsoft's acquisition of all these games and their studios is their smart business move. Since Activision owns some of the biggest gaming franchises in the world with games like Call of Duty, Overwatch, and Tony Hawk across other platforms and on PlayStation and Nintendo consoles. Microsoft's smart move will be to launch the Xbox Game Pass which offers access to a huge library of Microsoft games all for a single monthly fee. And also, instead of exclusively holding onto these games, Microsoft is selling games at full price on some consoles while still offering these games as part of the Xbox Game Pass bundle. Microsoft's acquisition of Activision and their subscription service for the Xbox Game Pass will attract more gamers since one can enjoy all the games as long as they are subscribed. But Zuckerberg has only built out a few small gaming initiatives for virtual reality and he is yet to acquire any of the big gaming companies. Zuckerberg probably doesn't believe that traditional sports franchises will adapt to metaverse. Nevertheless, if the metaverse evolves from the gaming industry, Zuckerberg is going to be on the losing side. Although Zuckerberg might have the upper hand with people using Quest headsets to access the metaverse, Microsoft will have the upper hand in terms of defining how users interact with the metaverse. And this is just one way Microsoft has killed Zuckerberg's metaverse. Interestingly, the gaming industry is not the only path into the metaverse. 
Another path is using the strategy of personal computers and how almost every individual or household owns one. Back then, when computers were launched many people weren't interested because they saw computers as glorified calculators. But after companies saw the advantage of productivity and profitability, people got used to computers at work. However, this wasn't enough, they also wanted to use computers at home. Before long, people wanted to play games on their PC. It has been speculated that Metaverse will follow the same pattern. With companies buying workers VR headsets so that they can collaborate remotely, this investment will be worth it if it can improve productivity. Zuckerberg is in on this business idea as he plans on making Horizon Workrooms the default application for virtual work. But it might be a little difficult for Meta, which focuses on consumers to shift its focus to businesses. Although to be fair, Facebook launched the workplace in 2016, so it isn't completely new. But Microsoft has the advantage because they have been selling software to companies since the 70s. But this is a different level of experience. Thanks to Satya Nadella's efforts, Microsoft has shifted from a focus on only Windows and it has fully embraced the cloud. This is because a lot of people use Apple products and Microsoft did not want to limit their success, so they built Teams. Microsoft Teams is not just about sharing documents and video chats, it is gradually growing into the deeper metaverse concept that Zuckerberg talks about. Already, Microsoft has a suite of products that let companies create what is called digital twins. Digital twins are virtual representations of physical objects like manufacturing equipment. It can give the 3D model of a factory, but much more than that, companies want to know what each piece of equipment is doing, how much energy the plant is using, and when the latest batch of products will come off the line. This is all part of the Internet of Things, but when integrated into a business context, these metaverse concepts can be immensely useful. Companies can sync real-time data with the digital twin which would help them analyze performance and build automated systems that will increase efficiency. And all this is made possible by augmented reality like Microsoft HoloLens. Also, with Microsoft's move from a single computing platform, you can now use Teams on a MacBook or stream gears of war to your iPhone. And this is another big advantage for Microsoft since they are not limiting people to a piece of hardware. With their excellent history with business users and their massive gaming empire, Microsoft is killing Zuckerberg on both sides. So what are your thoughts on Microsoft and Zuckerberg's efforts into the metaverse? Do you think Zuckerberg still stands a chance against Microsoft? Let us know what you think in the comments section. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell so you never miss an upload.